Namaskar and all. Uh, well, well, welcome all to the Mighty Mullen session. We'll start today's session with three rounds of Omkara. I don't Namaskar and Mantra. Do not degrade themselves by their mind. 
thereby they reach the supreme destination. Thank you. Shri Guru Bhyona Maha. Suprabhatam. So we'll just see a small background before you get into the shloka. So we have seen six topics. Purusha, Prakriti, Nyayam, Jnanam, Kshetrajna, Kshetra. Question obviously will be, what is the benefit of knowing all this? So, we are now come to the result. So the previous shloka gave one set of result, which is in the form of right vision. How do you see things? When you see things, see means see in this case, understand clearly. And now the second benefit comes in the shloka. So we have Purusha Prakriti. Purusha is also called Kshetra Gnya, Gnyayam. So these three names are given to Purusha. And that Purusha alone, you know from the beginning in Bhagavad Gita, wherever we are getting opportunity, we say pure consciousness. That Purusha alone is pure consciousness. Then what is this Prakriti? Prakriti is Kshetram. So Kshetram, Prakriti, both are the same. Ishwara, Vishwara, Ish, Vishwarupa Ishwara has two aspects. One aspect is the visible aspect which everybody is able to perceive either in the form of gross or in the form of subtle. That visible aspect is part of Prakriti. The body is also part of the Prakriti. From individual angle, body is Prakriti. The mind is Prakriti. So everything that you are aware of is Prakriti. And that Prakriti is object of your awareness, you are aware. Then what is this Purusha? First, another point of Prakriti before going to Purusha. Prakriti keeps on changing. Our mind changes, the body changes. Post the dropping of this body, we take another body, it is given in Bhagavad Gita also. Vasamsi Jirnani Yatha Vihaya. So, this keeps on happening at this Prakriti level. So the aspect of Prakriti of Vishwarupa Ishwara, this is happening. Then who is this Purusha? Purusha is the subject who is experiencing all this. And the subject alone, you say I. Okay. Every other knowledge you get is about the object. But here, when we talk about the knowledge given by Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Vedas, they talk about the subject I. And this subject I is called Purusha here or Kshetrajna or Gnayam. Why should it be known? Should we not know who am I really? Because all of us have been doing the activities not knowing who am I. So this Purusha, this I is constant, Samam, that which never perishes. Everything else will come and go. But this Purusha will be constantly available as I and this I never dies. This is the point that we have to understand. So the first point is the person having the right vision. What is that right vision that was told yesterday? One should understand when you are transacting things are changing, no doubt about it. That is the Prakriti aspect. But the I don't change at all. That should be there in the back of the mind. And I am the one and the only one who is constant. And that is that Purusha. So the first benefit is having this right vision. Otherwise what happens? Mixture. That mixture gives rise to problem. Take example. You are sitting in a movie. When you are sitting in a movie, I am sitting in a movie, let's assume I say I, Arun, I am sitting in the movie. Initially to start with, all of us are very clear. Okay, I. I am sitting and watching the movie. Then the movie starts. Once the movie starts, what happens? You get carried away with the movie. You lose sight of the fact that you are a person who is sitting in the theatre watching the movie. Am I right? You become one with the movie. When the hero gets hurt, tears well up your eyes. When there is an emotional scene, tears well up the eyes. Everybody has experienced this or not. So, if a person is not able to distinguish between this Purusha and Prakriti, the constant I and the changing Prakriti, if that distinguishing distinguishing 
is not there, distinction is not there, then we land up in problems. Why? Same thing when you are seeing the movie, you start crying or not? You are also suffering mentally along with the hero. Hero undergoes torture, partially you also undergo torture. You can take another example, dream. In dream, we get identified with that person in the dream. And when a tiger comes, afraid, right? So, this identification happens. We lose track. Generally, a person who does not understand the difference between Purusha and Prakriti identifies himself with the Prakriti. I am fat, I am tall, I am dumb, I am intelligent and therefore he lose, he does not know also there is something permanent called Purusha which is me. But a person who understands, we are talking about that person. What is the benefit that person gets? So let us see the right vision is the first uh, benefit. Now when we go to this shloka, we will see what this shloka is about to say. This is the second benefit. Samam Pashyan Hi Sarvatra Samavasthitam Ishwaram Na Hinasti Atmana Atmanam Tataha Yati Param Gatim. So let's look at the meaning first. Samam Pashyanti Sarvatra. The person, when he sees that constant Purusha, which is actually the subject I, in every transaction, which is uniform, does not change. That Samam Pashyan, he, Sarvatra means in and through all transactions. Even as he is talking with his teacher as a student, when he is talking with his student as a teacher, he does not lose sight of the fact that I am that Purusha who is constant and I am not anything that is changing. Like the person sitting in the movie and constantly he is aware, the movie is going on, I am different from the movie. So this part, the person who understands and he sees that Samavasthita, this is with respect to whom? Samavasthitam Ishwaram. Samavasthitam means uniformly present. Ishwaram here means Purusha. That entity which is constant, which never changes, which is always present for you, that Purusha which you call as I, I, when that Purusha is seen by him with the right vision, then Na Hinasti he is not destroyed Atmana by oneself Atmanam oneself So by oneself, oneself does not destroy What does this mean? We see this expression very regularly Don't ruin yourself We say or not? Okay. Similarly, the person who has the right understanding does not destroy himself by himself, that is the exact meaning, thereby, tataha yati, yati means reaches, okay, goes, travels and reaches, parangatim, parangatim here means moksha, liberation, freedom, this is the literal meaning, so let us see how is it possible, samam pashyanhi, so when you say samam pashyanhi, when he is seeing things similar, means what, the uniform, Purusha, that does not mean he sees everybody as uniform. So now you are talking with teacher, you say, well, how can I talk with teacher? Teacher and me are the same. No, that is not the point. So transactionally he understands, things are appearing differently. But at the background he understands that there is this constant Purusha who is Shetragnya, who is I, the subject. So things can change, but I don't change. And I have already explained this even with respect to our avasthas. Sarvatra can also mean the three avasthas. In all avasthas. In Jagrat avastha, waking state, when we are dreaming, dreaming state, when we are sleeping also in Sushupti. Everything changes, but you don't change. That's why you say, I slept. You, didn't, you don't say, somebody slept and now I know that somebody slept. That I is constant and that is Purusha. So the one who sees that and that Purusha is present everywhere. 
and that Purusha is the support, Adishthanam of everything. Everything is changing and that Purusha becomes the Adishthanam or support. Take an example, for, for example, you have sea, you have waves. Is water the support for the wave? If water is not there, the wave is not there. Yes or no? You see movie, you are seeing this now, this presentation. Can you project this presentation without the background screen? Something should be there, right? On which the projection is happening. So that support is Samavasthitam Ishwaram. Present everywhere, all pervading is that support. So one should understand that support I am, I Purusha I am and is present everywhere. And here, na hinasti has two meaning. What do you mean by destroying? Atmana, Atmana. So, we understand. Don't ruin yourself. If you say, you will understand. Who, who. But in this context, what does it mean? It means, if a person gets carried away by the movie, as the person suffers, whatever is happening in the movie, he takes on to himself and he is suffering partially. Similarly in dream. Similarly, a person who does not understand this subject I Purusha and is not changing at all and depends on everything that is changing that person what he does because of this mistake he takes himself that I am doing something I am experiencing, I am happy, I am sad so he starts doing all activities and when he starts doing all activities what happens then Punya comes, Papa is there because when you do an activity rightly Punya will be there, good activity, otherwise Papa will be there. Then next to Janma. So this goes on. This is what we mean by Hinasti. He destroys this body because of the karma that he gets. He also creates the body because of karma. This can be taken as one. Second is the real Atma you, I Purusha, is constant. It is not changing at all. You are not able to use that you are because the person is not having the knowledge of that. The person is not able to utilize that constant Atma, that knowledge, the result he is not able to utilize. I will give you an example. There is a poor person, he is staying in a hut and below the hut there is gold. It is his own, it is his own uh, small place where he has the hut. But because he does not know he is having the gold there, he is not able to utilize the gold. Therefore, that gold is as good as not available, destroyed. So similarly, Atma, Purusha that is constant is a source of security for us. Anything that is constant is a source of security. All of us should understand this. And the only thing that is permanent and constant is this Purusha. So to give you a small example before we close, a small kid who is playing, this everybody might have seen or at least might have seen in a movie, a small kid is playing in neighbor's house. His mother has come to the neighbor's house and is talking with the neighbor. And then time is up. The mother says, now let's go. The kid is now engrossed in playing. So what does the kid say? Tells, no, no, I will play, you go. Okay. Then the mother has to go because she has to do other things at home. So she starts walking. You know what the kid does? The kid sees the mother walking, puts down everything and says, okay, I will play tomorrow. Why? Because the kid knows that he has the sense of security in his mother or in her mother. Therefore, he wants to be with his mother. Similarly, all of us want that permanent source of security on which we can rely when something goes wrong. So therefore, that security is the real you Purusha, which is the real nature of Vishwarupa Ishwara. So that is what is said and if you hold on to that, what happens? You discover that you are really immortal. Like, you don't get carried away by the hero who is dying and say, oh, I am dying. You don't do that, right? You know that I am here, hero is dying. Similarly, the body goes away, but you know that you are immortal. Therefore, it is said, Yati Param Yati. So the one who understands this difference and one who identifies with that constant purusha, pure consciousness will not 
die. He knows he will not die because he has discovered that he can never die. He is constant. This is what is told in the Shloka. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niramaya Sarve bhatrani pashyantu Mahakashe dhukha bhare Om shanti 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 Alright, so for that one thing. Thank you all. Have a nice day.